Hello students of statics, this is Dr. Dan Baker, and in this short video, I'm going to try to clarify if you guys have some confusion going on in your brain about these different kinds of moments and couples that have been showing up from various sources onto a free body diagram. I'm going to talk about these different types and hopefully bring more clarity. First thing to note is that all couples, right? Remember, couple is the pure moment, pure rotation, either from a force pair or drawn as a curved arrow. All couples are moments, but not all moments are couples. And the reason for that is basically the difference between number one and two. If we have a moment from a force, right? That's this R cross F. That is going to be a moment from a linear force as linked by the position vector R, okay? So that's, ne that's never gonna be called a couple. That's just going to be called a moment. Remember, moment's the same thing as torque. But if you have an applied couple, okay, so whenever you see the word couple, you can really think that's a, that's a pure moment. It doesn't actually come from a force itself. It comes from just purely rotational um, tendency or even resistance to rotation. Okay, so if we have that drawn either as a force pair, equal opposite, and non-collinear, or as a rotational arrow, that's one of these applied couples. Okay, and so we talked about how we can compute those, and when we sum our moments, you basically need to add in both of those for resultant moments. But as we got into chapter five, we added another type of moment, and this is either called a reaction moment. It also could be called a reaction couple because it's actually drawn typically in more in the couple notation than the moment notation. But this is from a support which prevents rotation. Remember we said that support couples come from a prevention of rotation of that support. All right, so to hopefully bring a little more context to these, we're gonna fill out this table. And if you wanna go ahead and draft that table out before we get there, feel free to think through those. Um, and I'll go through these box by box. So first of all, is an R cross F moment location independent? Well, the answer is no. And the reason it's not independent is, it's, is that it's going to vary with R. Right? If I pick a different point on my body to some moments around, then I'm going to have a different distance between that point to the line of action of the force. Therefore, my moment will vary depending on where I sum moments around. But for these other two, it turns out they are both location independent. And that's because they're couples. Now, one modification I'm gonna to make to this column is when we talk about location dependence. Um, this is for external effects. And I mentioned in a previous video about external versus internal. This is the whole idea of if you push on the outside of a vehicle, either pushing on the bumper or pulling on the front bumper, you're doing the same thing externally, but internally, as far as the stresses and the loads that are going through that structure are gonna be very different, okay? So internal versus external. It turns out that all three of these do need to be included on a free body diagram. So you could have a problem that has R cross F moments, a problem that additionally has an applied couple, and finally also a reaction couple, okay? So you can have all of those. They're all included on a free body diagram. Now, as we get into summing forces, because two and three, these two couples, are pure rotation, it turns out that neither one of these is gonna show up at all in your sum of force equations. Now, the first one, your R cross F, it turns out that the moment from the force doesn't show up in your sum of forces, but F, your forces, still shows up, right? When you sum your forces, um, this will show up in your sum of force equation, um, but your R cross F does not. Okay, so just pointing out that the force from that moment still shows up in your sum of forces, but the R cross F, which is essentially the moment it comes from the force, does not. Now, then the question is, well, do we need to include these when we sum moments about a point? And it turns out you have to include all three of these no matter where you sum moments around a point on a body. Now, the only caveat there, I guess, a little bit would be if your force line of action happened to go through this point, 
then you wouldn't have an R cross F moment from that force. Um, but you still could include it as a zero. You're still going to acknowledge the fact you could get a moment from that force and still consider it. And so really from both this column and this one, we could put that the sum of all moments about a point fundamentally comes from the addition of these three moments. Okay, so it's basically from one plus two plus three, and in statics we can set those equal to zero, right, because we have no acceleration. So this is our rotational equilibrium equation. All right, I hope that that brings a little bit of clarity to this idea of how there's moments that come from different places. Some are applied, some are from supports, some of them need cross products, some of them don't. Uh, continue to ask more questions about moments as you're working through um, clarifying your knowledge of them. I believe in you that you can um, work through and learn all these different details and I hope you're having a great day.